So if you're thinking of moving abroad, you might be wondering what is the best way to manage your mail? You have a few options, but my number one pick is to get a virtual mailbox. And in this video, I'll break down why it's important to keep a US mailing address when you move abroad, what a virtual mailbox is and why I recommend it, how it works and more. Hello, if you're new here, my name is Seppi, rhymes with Peppy from SheHitRefresh.com, and I help women age 30 and over break free from a life of routine to move abroad or travel the world long term. And that's exactly what I did back in 2015 when I was 35 years old. I packed up all my belongings, sold my car, hopped on a plane, and moved to Madrid, Spain. It's now been almost seven years, and I am still here loving life and do not see myself leaving Spain anytime soon. So first, I just want to thank you so much for tuning into my channel. If you're here, you're probably interested in moving abroad. And that's exactly what I talk about here, specifically for U.S. citizens who want to move abroad. So I'd love to invite you to give this video a like, subscribe to my channel, and also turn on notifications so that you don't miss out on any future move abroad content. Okay, so let's get back to mail. If you're moving abroad from the US and wondering how to manage your mail while you're gone, you do have a few options. One option, which is a popular one, is to leave your mail or change your mailing address to one of a relative or a friend. The second popular option is to get a PO box. And the third option, which is my top one, is to get a virtual mailbox. So the reason why I'm all for a virtual mailbox is that I believe it's the most convenient option because not only do virtual virtual mailbox act as a mailing address, but they also allow you to manage your mail from wherever you are in the world. But before we get into all of that, I want to get to my weekly shout out. So this week's shout out goes to Ether Alt B, I hope I said that right, who commented on my video, move abroad with your pet, a 12 step checklist. And they say, thank you, thank you. I've really been worrying about this. Yes, I know. Well, thank you so much for watching my video. I know that it can be nerve wracking moving abroad with our little fur babies. I did it myself with Chloe, my five pound chihuahua that you will see in that video there. There are some steps that you need to take and it can feel a bit overwhelming, but just know that you are almost there to the finish line. And yes, getting everything together, the stress and the logistics of getting your pet abroad will be a lot. It's totally worth it and you can do it. Now for any viewers out there who would like to get a shout out, just drop a comment below or ask a question and you never know you might be the next shout out that I select. Okay and without further ado let's dive into today's video about what to do with your mail when you move abroad. So the first thing I want to mention here is that you should definitely keep a mailing address when you leave the US. So if you were debating whether or not to keep one the answer is yes. So keeping your mailing address when you move abroad in the US keeping one will come in very handy once you move because companies and government agencies and other organizations will want to send you sometimes something physical to a mailing address. And so if you don't have an address, it may be difficult to get a hold of whatever necessary paperwork you need to have. So definitely make sure that you're keeping a mailing address in the US. You may want to receive things such as property taxes, maybe a check that's coming, a refund check, your voter registration card, and so many other things. So definitely if you were debating, the answer is yes. So the next thing I want to talk about is a virtual mailbox. As I mentioned a little bit earlier, there are different ways that you can manage your mail from abroad, leave it with a friend, get a PO box. But number two here is why you came to this video and what I want to talk about, and that is to get a virtual mailbox. So let's talk about what it is. So a virtual mailbox is a service that receives your mail on your behalf and helps you manage that mail on their online platform. So this is a virtual platform that allows you to access your mail at any time, anywhere, and on any device. It's super, super convenient, and that's why this is my top pick. So with the virtual mailbox, you don't have to have your mail sent to your mom's house, your cousin's house, your sister's house, and have to text them or call them to see what mail has come, if they should open it, to take a picture, to send it to you. That can just get really cumbersome and difficult to try to coordinate all of those logistics. Alternatively, if you get a PO box, that's great also, but you're gonna have to rely on someone to go to that PO box, pick up that mail and do the same thing. Take pictures, open things for you. It's just not as convenient as having this virtual platform that you can access and see all of your mail and be able to manage it from there. 
So hopefully you're getting a better idea of what a virtual mailbox is, but I wanna talk about how exactly it works. So let's get into that. So virtual mailbox companies are located all over the US. They're probably located all over the world, but this video is for US audience. So they're located all over the world. The one that I use is located in Austin, Texas, because that's where I was living at the time when I moved and I opened one there because it was convenient. So no matter where you live, whatever city, state or country, you can still open a virtual mailbox anywhere within the US. So how it works, if you have an account with a virtual mailbox company, mine is called Scan Mailbox. So with Scan Mailbox, they receive my mail, and we'll talk a little bit about that next, about how we even get the mail to go to them. But they receive my mail, and what they would do is they would scan the front copy of the envelope or a box, and that would be on their online platform. That's what I would access when I go into my dashboard. I would be able to see all of the scanned mail there. So they do not open your letter and scan it. What they do is they're scanning the outside of a letter, and then you can let them know how to manage that mail from there. So all of that mail that they have scanned and that is available for you to access on your platform, that physical mail is in locked into a secure on-site storage. So it's kept there until you let the virtual mailbox company know what to do with that mail. So what can you do with that mail? Well, there are a few options that you have. So you can have them open that mail and scan it for you. We'll talk about that in a minute. You can have them forward that mail or package to where you are or to another address. You can have them shred that mail for you, delete it and get rid of it or you can have them store that mail for you. So maybe you're gonna want to pick that up at a later date, or maybe you're collecting a few bits of mail together before you want that to be forwarded to you. And I guess last but not least, uh, they can also deposit checks into your bank account on your behalf, so that's also an option. So number four then is managing your mail. I just gave you a few different options for how to manage it, but I just wanted to give you a quick peek into what the dashboard looks like. And so this is the dashboard for Scan Mailbox. There are so many virtual mailbox companies out there, so pick the one that best suits you, but you will have access to a dashboard no matter where you are, and from there you can see your mail and manage it from there. So I really love this because from the outside of a letter, I can usually tell if it's gonna be junk mail or something that's important. So if it is something important, let's say it's something from the IRS, I would click here on my dashboard that I would want that letter to be opened and scanned, and that way I would be able to see the contents of the letter from my virtual dashboard board here. So again, these virtual mailbox companies are not opening your mail without your consent. But also if I see that a piece of mail from the outside is junk mail, I will just go in and click the shred button there. And so Scan Mailbox or the virtual mailbox company will shred that piece of mail without opening it. Also, I had mentioned forwarding. So if there are any mail that I would like forwarded to me here in Spain or maybe to a different address in the US, sometimes when I go to the US, I stay with family. And so sometimes I have that mail forwarded there for me to pick up. You can do that as well. You can click forward and put in the forwarding address that you would like. And of course the check part, which I know some people are a little bit scared about having a third party company deposit checks into your account, but it is all very secure. And I have done this multiple times and it has been so convenient to have, whether that is a tax refund or a refund from, I don't know, my home warranty or from some company that owes me money. And when they send a check to my virtual mailbox, I'm able to have the virtual mailbox company deposit that check into my bank account on my behalf. So I don't have to worry about managing checks in the US from Spain or from wherever I am. So hopefully you can see how convenient a virtual mailbox is because you don't have to rely on anyone else to really have access to your mail. This platform is ongoing in the sense that once your mail comes in and arrives to the virtual mailbox, they will scan it and put it up there for you to manage. Now let's talk quickly about privacy because I'm sure that's something that you're thinking about here. You know, this is a complete stranger that has access to your mail. How does that even work and how do you know that it's secure? So for a virtual mailbox company to even be able to legally open your mail, you have to complete a postal consent form. That requires you to get a document notarized. You have to turn that into the virtual mailbox company before they can even do anything. So that's the first part of security there is giving that permission to a third party. So with whichever company that you use, you will want to see what their privacy conditions are and their terms, but typically they are not allowed to disclose your information 
with anyone else. Also, they have to follow procedures and safeguards that comply with the state of where your virtual mailbox company is and federal regulations as well. So let's talk about how to sign up. How do we even get started with this process? So whichever company that you pick, you're going to have to not only pick a plan because there's different plans. In my case, I actually share my virtual mailbox with my siblings in the US. So we have kind of a high volume amount of mail coming in. So we have um, not so much a standard plan. A lot of plans, depending on the company, can start at, you know, $10 a month. We have more of a premium plan, so it's a little bit more, but it allows us all three to manage our mail. So one, you're going to have to pick a plan and also pick your mailbox number. So you will have an actual address, physical address, and a mailbox number that is yours. You will then have to also complete the postal consent form and also a change of address request form. So you're going to have to have your current address change to the virtual mailbox address. And as I just mentioned, it's really cool that these virtual mailboxes, often you can have multiple people using the same mailbox. So like I mentioned, my siblings and I are all using the same mailbox there. And that's really it. After you have those two things done or those few things done, then you'll have access to your virtual dashboard. You can start receiving mail there and managing it from abroad. So one thing that I do want to talk about here is having a home address or a residency. So virtual mailboxes can be used as a personal or business address, but they cannot be listed as a residence or business address on a legal document. So you still may want to have a home address in the U.S. somewhere, even though you may not be physically living there. So a lot of people get around this by using a friend or a relative's address. And so while your mail will be sent to the virtual mailbox, you can still use your friend's or relative's home address for any legal documents that may require a home address and not a mailing address. Because again, your virtual mailbox is gonna serve more as a mailing address for you. All right, well, that is it. I hope you found this video on what to do with your mail when you move abroad and virtual mailbox, very helpful. I know I love my virtual mailbox. I've been using it since 2015 and really, really happy of how convenient it is. If you would like more information on the company I use, it's called Scan Mailbox and I will drop the link down there below. And if you have anything to add or any questions, just drop your comments and questions below as well. And as always, if you need more resources on moving abroad, please check out my digital guide, I'm Out of Here, an American's ultimate visa guide to living in Europe, where I go over the 17 easiest countries to move to in Europe based on viable visa options. There's over 50 visa options in there for you that can help you make your dream of moving to Europe a reality. And if you're a woman age 30 and over, please join my Facebook group, She Hit Refresh, and that's at Facebook facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash she hit refresh. You'll meet over 10,000 like-minded women who can help you with your move abroad. You'll find resources, information, and tangible tips on how to make that move abroad happen. And last but not least, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a like, subscribe to my channel, and turn on notifications so that you don't miss out on any future move abroad content.